Hi everyone, it's Lisa here from Pro Writing Aid. Um, so my guest tonight is Grant Faulkner from Nat. Oh my God, I'm having a panic. National National November. <laughs> what is it? National Novel Writing Month. It, it's a mouthful. I know. It's I just call it NaNoWriMo all the time, and sometimes I forget what that actually stands well, for. You're, you're pronouncing it right because a lot of people say NaNoWriMo. Oh, NaNoWriMo. And, uh, and other variations, but it is National NaNoWriMo. NaNoWriMo. Yeah. Yeah. So, Grant, we always hear within our community that a lot of our writers take part in NaNoWriMo. One of our freelancers who writes for their blog is taking all of November off because she's gonna she's determined to win NaNoWriMo <laughs> this year. Um, but then there were a lot of people when we talk about it that still say, what is this NaNoWriMo? We've never heard anything about it. So we're sponsoring um, NaNoWriMo for the first time this year, which meant that we get our own access to Grant, who's the executive director of NaNoWriMo. He's also the host of the Right Minded podcast, and he's also um, behind the 100 Word Story magazine. Is that right? It is. 100 Word Story. Not more, not less. Got to be exactly 100 words. Yeah, which fills me with fear <laughs> a little bit. I love, I love clear parameters. Um, <laughs> So for those people that are with us today that maybe don't know what NaNoWriMo is, do you want to just give us um, give us an overview of how it started and what and what it is? Yeah, you know, um, NaNoWriMo is many things. I think I could fill the whole hour just describing what it is, but I won't. I'll give you just the overview uh, as you asked for. Okay. But I think that the easiest way to understand it is it's one part writing boot camp, one part big rollicking writing party. And so the boot camp part of it is, is that it's a challenge to write 50,000 words of a novel in 30 days. And so we believe that a goal and a deadline is a creative midwife and that too many people go through life saying, I want to write, write a novel someday. And, you know, someday when the life is, you know, gives them these perfect writing conditions. But, but that never or rarely happens, you know? So, so NaNoWriMo is, is a very carpe diem type of writing, you know, seize the day, write your novel now. And, um, and yeah, that's why we do the challenge of 50,000 words in 30 days. And then the rollicking party part of it, that takes a number of different forms. We have um, a thousand volunteers who we call municipal liaisons and they're literally around the world. So you can find them in the UK, you can find them in tiny places in the United States. And they organize, uh, generally every year, they organize in-person writing gatherings. So we kind of demythologize the solitary writer and bring people together because that enforces um, or invites more accountability, um, mm -hmm. also just more fun, more kind of collaboration. Mm -hmm. And so usually, excuse me, they would uh, organize these write-ins, as we call them, in, in you know, cafes and things like that, pubs. But this year, it's all virtual, of course. Um, so that's both, I think, unfortunate and fortunate. Um, yeah. And then we work with 1,200 libraries across the country that also do the same thing. They, they nurture writing communities uh, within the libraries and host writing events. And then we have this really vibrant website. Uh, in, in our forums, there are literally a 1,000 posts every November of people talking about every writing topic under the sun. Mm -hmm. um, social media is just flooded with uh, hashtag NaNoWriMo. And, and one thing that's really cool about this, I think, is I'll oftentimes hear from people that they're so galvanized by this rush of gusto that they feel in the air or they feel, you know, in the cyber air. Mm -hmm. And that really motivates them to keep writing because they feel like the whole world is writing with them. And I, I feel it as a powerful force, too. It's just amazing to me. Um, and, and, and the principle of everything, too, is that NaNoWriMo writers are the most encouraging and empowering people that I've ever met in my life, you know? So it's an event that it's not about, the, the achievement is about the act of doing it, not about like the, the hierarchy of status that one might get from publishing. So there's yeah, no Yeah, there is no a studious. lot of status around, they call it winning it. So if you do manage to get through your 50,000 words, you've won NaNoWriMo. And I think there's, that's gotta be a great feeling. It's definitely a great feeling and it's a huge achievement. I mean, um, really accomplished writers have a hard time writing 50,000 words in a month. It's really tough to do. It's tough for me to do every year. I don't think I really get that much better at it. <laughs> every <laughs> novel is a new novel and poses uh, new challenges. So it's just tough. Um, do you do it most years or do you try and do you, I do. do you it's amazing to me how often people say, I, I bet you don't do it, do you? 
<laughs> they make that assumption. <laughs> and, and, and my premise is, so one of, the, one of the reasons I hear from people about why they're not doing it when I invite them to do it is they'll say, I'm too busy. And so the thing about busyness is, is that we're all busy. I've been in rooms of 500 people and I've, I've asked people, how, how many of you are busy people? And all 500 hands go up. Mm -hmm. And of course, of those 500 people, there's a whole spectrum of bu true busyness. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe that most of us can find time in our lives to write. And mm -hmm. so I think like right now is actually a wonderful time to look at November and think about how long will it take you to write 1700 words a day? you know, to reach 50,000 words. And for me, that takes about two hours. So when I start writing my novel in November, I have to figure out how am I going to get that two hours a day to write? Mm -hmm. You know, if I do an hour in the morning before I go to work, how am I going to get that second hour? You know, do I have to write during my lunch break? Do I need to cut out social media? Do I need to stay up a little later at night? Mm -hmm. Or maybe I need to do a lot of power writing on the weekend. And so I think this is the number one thing that, that people need to really think about is that level of commitment and how to, how to make the time to write. Yeah, I agree. My husband actually did it maybe 14 years ago or something like that. And even, you know, as there's something about having a clear endpoint that makes something feel doable. And so this was the first time that I'd come across it and he said that he was going to do it. And, you know, even as a non-participant, the idea that he was just going to be busy for this month and he wasn't going to be watching TV and he wasn't going to be doing, you know, some of the things that we normally do. But if it's only a month, you can do almost anything exactly. for a month and then return back. And if you if that's what it takes to go hard and finish like a solid first draft, then for me, because I'm quite deadline driven, that seems quite doable to me. There's so many benefits and that's great. You mentioned that kind of like knowing the ending, whereas like a lot of times when you start a novel, a novel can just be a very open-ended thing. Yeah, it can take it can years and years and, and maybe never end. And so, yeah, having that marker can really help. Um, I think there's a number of, of different things that, that having that constraint can do for you. Um, I always think of, um, you know, the other reasons other than busyness is that some, some people say that they're not a creative type or they're not a writer and, um, Picasso has this great quote that he's that, that every, every child is born an artist. The challenge is how to remain an artist when you're an adult. And I feel like um, creativity, the, the downside of adulthood is that sometimes creativity falls lower and lower on our to-do list until it's not there at all. And like you said, NaNoWriMo is just one month. Um, it's a one month challenge. And so you can make creativity and writing a priority for just one month. And what a lot of people find is that after doing it for a month, then, you know, it becomes easier you know, the rest of the year. Yeah, and well, they, uh, practice, I always, you know, I always tell people that writing is like anything, you know, the more you do, the better you get at it. The more you understand what you want to say, the more you understand how sentences work and how punctuation works and all of that. It's yeah, all it's all practice. Uh, we wanted to dispel this notion that, that, that people are born talented writers, you know, uh, people make themselves uh, talented writers and they also make themselves inspired. I mean, part of the premise of NaNoWriMo is don't wait for inspiration to strike down from the heavens. Uh, you know, start writing and you will create inspiration on the page. I think too often writers only write when they're inspired, which means they rarely write. So I think uh, to be a writer on any level, you have to find a way to, you know, kind of have that discipline and, and, and that routine to do it regularly. Yeah. Um, so for everybody that's watching, I'm, I've got my eye on the Q&A box. Um, if, you, if you want to comment or anything, you're welcome to do that in the chat. Um, but I'm going to keep an eye on the Q&A box. So if there's particular things that you want me to ask, Grant, just let me know. Um, the first question is from Kevin. He says he wants to know why you decided on 50,000 words in 30 days. Why not round it up to 60 or down to 30 or 45 just to help the daily averages? Um, I think we will put it at 75 this year. I'm going to change it because of that question. We're going to go for 75,000 words. I'm going to change it on the website right now. We're going higher. Uh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, you know, so the full story is, is that Chris Beatty, who founded NaNoWriMo in 1999, and he didn't, he didn't found NaNoWriMo thinking, oh, this is going to be a creative phenomenon. Thousands of people are going to do it, and it's going to turn into a nonprofit, and my, my successor is going to talk to, to somebody in, uh, in, in London and have a webcast that can be seen around the world. He didn't, he didn't think of all that, uh, but he did kind of roll over in bed and look at his bookshelf and he wanted to write a novel. He was an avid reader, a passionate reader, and he took a few of the more slender volumes off of his bookshelf. So think Great Gatsby, uh, Catcher in the Rye, 
uh, Graham Greene novel. Um, and he did, a, he did a, a rough word count and estimated that they were all around 50,000 words. And then he did some very uh, complicated math and divided 30 days into 50,000 and figured out that writing about 1,700 words a day was very doable. And so he invited 21 of his friends. It, you know, everything we do started that first year and it wasn't calculated or planned, but he met with his friends after work. They all wrote together in a cafe. And, you know, so again, that brings in the community aspect that, that runs through everything we do. It also, um, they, they, they wanted to make writing fun and social as well. So they would do different challenges, um, which, which again, at, at our write-ins, we still do challenges like this. So for instance, they might sit down and the first person who could get to 500 words would get a latte and everybody had to chip in <laughs> for that. Like and then that. after they'd had, you know, several cups of coffee and a lot of beverages, the challenge would be, you cannot go to the bathroom until you've written a thousand words. <laughs> and, and this is still the best writing motivator known to humankind. So if you really <laughs> need to write a thousand words, I recommend that. <laughs> I like it. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, so someone says, um, are those 1700 words good or do they need to be edited later? I think I know the answer. Well, so our premise is, um, and I think it's very true, is that every first draft is a rough draft. It's a crappy draft. You're, you're really writing to explore your story and find your story. So um, it, it, it kind of needs to be rough in a lot of ways and you should accept that it's rough because you can't edit a blank page. You just need to get words down on the page and then you can edit later. Um, and I think it's worth noting, I, I think what intimidates a lot of people from writing their stories is that they read their favorite books and their favorite authors and then when they sit down to write, um, there's a big chasm between what they write and what their favorite authors, what they read in their favorite authors books. And what they sometimes don't realize is that their favorite authors also started with that really crappy rough draft, no matter how esteemed they are. I mean, I. All my, all my first drafts are, are just, yeah, rough. I would never show them to anybody. So the premise is, is don't hold yourself up that one way to get over that obstacle is to banish your inner editor and to make writing fun and to explore your rough draft. Just let your, you know, experiment, follow wacky ideas, just write that rough draft and then you can come back to it and shape it and uh, structure it and use use tools like pro writing aid to to clean up the grammar and um yeah and that's that's the time you want to do things like that yeah i think so too we, we often say that to people that you know sometimes when you're writing you're in creative mode and sometimes you're in editing mode and it's very different parts of your brain and each i quite like editing mode but i know a lot of people find it really difficult and find it less natural for them but I just think when you're, if you know that you're going to come back and edit it later, you can just, you know, you can drop a cliche and then you can do, you know, you don't have to worry about really awkward sentences. You just go and get your, get your ideas down, get your story down. And then, then you can come back and fix it when you're, when you're done. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, I think there's a, um, a myth that, that writing fast or writing for quantity doesn't lead to quality, but I actually think it does. And that's because you're taking those creative risks, you're opening yourself up with more freedom. And, um, and so, yeah, a lot, a lot of times writing to, to, for quantity actually ironically leads to, to quality writing. And I'm like you, I actually prefer to edit. I love editing. If I could skip the whole rough draft, I might you know, just pay someone to deliver my rough draft to me yeah. so I wouldn't have to work on it. But that's another principle, great thing about NaNoWriMo is it helps me get through that rough draft that I find very torturous. Yeah. Well, and I think like when my husband did it, he, he won it and wrote the whole article and has never looked at it again since. Cause I think he just didn't know, it's like, where do you go now? How do you, how do you begin editing tools and software didn't start? And he just didn't feel like he had the ability to, or he just didn't, it just seemed too big, too big a job, 50,000, yeah. where do you begin? Whereas now I think part of what we try and do at Pro Writing Aid is break it down into sort of bite-sized chunks. So, you know, yeah. you've got your, run your report, just focus on readability, run your report, just focus on repeats, you know, and, and then it feels a bit more doable and you feel like you can, you can check exactly. things to do this. Exactly. You just make it more manageable and every big thing like that, you have to break it down into chunks. Like if you think yeah. of the whole thing in its entirety, it's just way too overwhelming. Perfect. And that's why, and that's why we challenge people. I mean, the challenge is 50,000 words in a month, but it's really 1700 words a day. So you've got to focus on that daily word count, hitting those, you know, yeah. daily 
you know, in increments. Yeah. Well, and we're going to um, we're going to do a session for everybody that does NaNoWriMo after the fact, just to help them figure out where to take their rough draft and how to edit it and how and try to try and turn it into something cool, more effective. Um, yeah. OK, so Barbara says, can it be something other than a novel? So we get this question increasingly, actually. Um, our, our official NaNoWriMo policy is that if you call it a novel, we call it a novel. And so this is kind of an end run around this question. <laughs> um, but really, I want people to write. You know, that's the, 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 the thing that I most, I don't want to ever say no to somebody writing. And I think the, the, the goal and deadline framework can help people with anything they're writing. Mm -hmm. And so we also have this concept of nano rebels. Um, and that can mean you can be a nano rebel if you want to revise a past novel or if you want to write a memoir. We've had people write PhD dissertations. I'm sure we've had people write just the weirdest things in the world that I don't even know about. Yeah. So I would invite, um, yeah, everyone to write and write what you want to write because, um, you know, the, we believe the world's a better place when people are, are writers and when they embrace their creativity. Yeah, get your ideas out there. Even if yeah. it's not a novel, write it. Yeah, make it work for you. Yeah, exactly. So someone says, how long should a novel be? Is 50,000 words enough? And what if you, yeah, so what if you get to the end of your 50,000 and you're only, you still have yeah. words to tell? So yeah, 50,000 words is definitely on the shorter side of novels. It's, it's really almost a novella. Um, so I think the standard length of most novels is more in the 80,000 word range. Uh, of course, novels, uh, they're bigger novels than that. Um, but I think that that's kind of the custom commercial sized novel. Um, so yeah, a lot of people write 50,000 words in NaNoWriMo and they really are just exploring the story. So then they, after November, they might add another 30,000 words. Um, there are also people who go way beyond 50,000 words. <laughs> We've had people write, you know, 200,000 words in the month, believe it or not. So, yeah, um, when you get to the end of the month, it's not like you have to stop. Like that's it. You don't have to stop. It's no. like an exam where the timer goes and that's it. No, no in more. an ideal world, <laughs> your husband would go back in time 14 years and yeah. he would finish that novel. And then he would sign up in our program. I wrote a novel now what that happens in January and February. And he would edit that novel and start thinking about publishing options. And yeah. yeah. So yeah, go the whole that's journey. To dig it out. Um, okay. Oh, Asha says, so when is National Month of Editing? Because <laughs> she, feels, she feels scared about it. <laughs> yeah, I think a goal deadline works for editing as well. It's a little different because I think editing, you have to kind of, you know, every, people have different kinds of tracking mechanisms, but I think time works the best. So um, yeah, we have a program. I wrote a novel, Now What? That starts in January and February. And um, you can also use our Camp NaNoWriMo or our, web, our website actually allows you to, to set goals and deadlines for projects throughout the year. So you can do that in any kind of time parameters. So I recommend that. But yeah, in January and February, we offer a lot of revision and, and publishing advice. So. And that's yeah, quite good. Then it gives you a little bit of space from it. Because yeah. if, you, if you write something in November, it's so hard to go back and edit something that you've just written because you know what Absolutely. you were trying to say. It's all really fresh. And then when you read it again and you don't understand, you know, your own sentences that you wrote two months ago, much. It's that is fresh. I think that's the number one revision technique I would um, advise people is to take some time off and then you can read it as if you're a reader, not the writer. And you'll, you'll, you'll see things you want to fix or, you know, places where it's a little slow or characterization needs to be beefed up a bit, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so somebody's saying, um, if you write, depending on the genre that you're writing on, are there different lengths that you should um, aim for? Which I think is a good question, because I think particularly fantasy and some of, the, some of the books in those genres tend to be a bit beefier, a bit mm -hmm. heartier. Um, would you have a different, um, strategy if you were going to go in knowing that you wanted to write a big epic? Um, in terms of a writing strategy, I don't think necessarily. I think, um, again, especially for a rough draft, it's such an exploratory draft. We do have a lot of people, um, an active conversation that we have is how to pre best prepare to write um, a novel. And so we have, and, and that's what we have a whole nano, what we call nano prep curriculum that's on the website that you can access. But th there's a whole spectrum. We have people who very, you know, deeply and meticulously plan their novels. They might write 20 or 50 page outlines, you know, 
and then and then we have people who absolutely do not know what they're going to write at midnight on October 31st and they just <laughs> let their fingers kind of decide it and it's kind of amazing because there are stories in you that will come out and in fact, the founder's book, Chris, Chris Beatty's book is called No Plot, No Problem. <laughs> well, well, that's interesting. One of the questions here is, what if you don't know what to write? You yeah, write so I think a lot of people have just let, have just gone with it and they've had a perfectly great experience and they've won. Um, I always recommend, we have a, something in the middle called Plantsers. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I am. Um, I, I like to prepare kind of just enough. So I like there to be mystery in the story, because I like to write for a sense of mystery, but I also like to have a, a direction, you know, and so that I can have a direction just based on on a sketch of the novel on a couple pages and some notes of characterization. So I kind of spend the month of October just kind of exploring my, my story and my daydreams and taking notes. Um, and that helps me, you know, on November 1st. But I think, you know, one of the things about NaNoWriMo is um, it's a great opportunity to experiment with your creative process. And that's how I found it originally. I was a very slow, ponderous, precious writer. I had to get my first chapter just perfect before I would move on, you know. And so uh, what I didn't realize is that after writing the whole novel and getting to the end and then revising it, what it inevitably would happen is I'd cut my first chapter. So all yeah. that time <laughs> was wasted or, or it would just change dramatically. And I always mention this quote from Joyce Carol Oates. She says, you don't know your, the first line of your novel until you've written the last line. Yeah. And I think that really speaks to getting through the whole draft, you know, just like focus on getting it through it all and then you can revise it entirely. Yeah, I think so too. But I think I'm, I'm maybe air a bit more on the planner side rather than the pantser side. We we put together a book called um, the Novel Writing Training Plan. I'll, when I send out the the replay of this to everybody tomorrow, I'll include a link for everybody to download it for free. But it basically just gives you a lot of questions to try and think over in advance of sitting down to write. So who are your main characters? What are their what are the key characteristics about them? What are they interested in? What are they not? Some like key plot points. Just generally preparation so that when once you start writing you don't have to stop and try and figure out you know what the job is of your main character you can you've yeah. already, you already know that you've got some of that stuff sort of sussed out and of course it'll change as you're writing and things you know there's that sort of flexibility in there but yeah we call it a, as if you're um training for the marathon of writing so just try yeah. and get your body in shape get your creative juices flowing so that then yeah you can sit down and and just go for it yeah Everybody's got a different style and even a different manner of planning. I mean, I, I've, I've also thought that writing the rough draft in itself is a type of planning. Yeah. So in, in, instead of calling it a first draft, I call it sometimes a zero draft in, and to treat NaNoWriMo as a planning month. Yeah, so. lots of people call it the zero draft. The folks over at the Novel Factory talk a lot about their zero draft, which is oh, just okay. putting the structure, like writing, but more thinking of it as building the foundations for your house and then... Yeah on top of that yeah i yeah. like that so it gives you a bit more freedom as well if you don't have to have exactly everything in place yeah okay so arlene has signed up she has an account um and she's added the info for her tentative project for this year is there anything else she needs to do any other registration she needs to do yeah i would i would advise uh going to i think that's called the community tab it's amazing how i forget what our tabs are on the website um yeah it's under community and go into the, the your your find a region tab and uh the reason i say that is that's where you sign up for uh the the local gatherings which will happen virtually this year but or, ordinarily they would happen in person and i think uh that's just a, a great thing i think every writer should also think about the the writing community and being involved in the writing community i say that because i didn't do that for years i was just a solitary writer and I guess that was fine, um, but I've been I've been so much happier uh, once I've found um, a whole tribe of, of of writers who I, you know, I mean they give me so many things in so many different respects, and so I just think it's very valuable for writers to be part of a community. And so there's a great you know thriving community in NaNoWriMo and in your local community. So take advantage of it. Yeah, and that just that level of accountability. If you've got somebody that you know at the end of the day is going to say, "So, did you get there? Did you do it?" I just feel like it's going to make you do it it's, in a way that nobody's checking up. 
Absolutely. It's friendly peer pressure. And they've actually done psychological studies on this. Like if you want to change behavior, the single best way to change your behavior is to tell someone else that you're doing something yeah. for exactly that purpose. They say like, if you want to quit smoking, post on social media, tell everyone you're going to quit smoking, and then you will, you will have to do it. And yeah. the same thing goes with NaNoWriMo, you know, post on social media that you're writing a novel this month. Um, and just so you go to the grocery store, you're going to have to bump into somebody who's going to ask you how your novel's going. <laughs> yeah, no, I like it. It's the mm -hmm. it's sort of the reason why I go to the gym because I just if I'm just trying to do sit ups by myself in my house, I just don't do it. But <laughs> if I yeah, exactly, if I'm going out there and I'm doing it as part of a community, then it feels slightly less painful. Yeah, maybe. Um. Okay. So, oh man, we've got a lot of questions here. Um. Yeah. Barb says, "Can we drop Grant's podcast and the website address for NaNoWriMo in the chat?" Yeah, I dropped the po the podcast in. Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm a bad multitasker. No. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the NaNoWriMo um, link in right now, and I will also drop in Hundred Words Story. Um, but here's the NaNoWriMo link, and you can go there. I should say everything's free. You have nothing to lose and a novel to gain. So please sign up. And there's a pretty sweet providing a discount once you get into the system as well. There you go. But look in the chat. I can see lots of people saying already that they're going to do it. Good. If you're going to, if you're going to do it, write in the chat and tell us that you're going to do it. Um, well, well, one, sorry, at least one more thing, because somebody asked uh, the question, what else to do on the site? So now, if, now that people are joining here live, if they could put their username in chat, then people can buddy them. So we have a whole kind of like social media friendship. Oh, um, I love that. Thing. So that's another way to form community on the site. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and then I'd go to our forums. In the forum, can we set up like a providing a community thread and then everybody can find each other in there? We have a uh, sponsor you know, thread already. Yeah, I would I would guide them to the sponsor thread. Um, okay. That's that's actually a great idea. So in the forums, there's a section called sponsor offers and uh you'll you'll find a pro writing aid there yeah i go in and just check up on everything on things every couple of days and so if anybody has any questions or anything like that let me know and then we can all meet up and chat in there cool uh, margie says what's camp nanorimo yeah so it's a it's a more casual version of nanorimo and it happens in april and july we have a session in april uh, a session in july uh, fewer people do it, about, but still, seventy-five thousand people do it. So a lot of people do it. Um, How many I think I forgot. Main one. Um, what's that? Sorry. How many people do it in November? Yeah, I forgot to mention that. So about three hundred thousand people do it on our main site, and then about a hundred thousand kids and teens do it on our Young Writers Program site. Um, so in camp, uh, it's more wide open. So you can you can write whatever you want to write. Um, you can revise. You can write a script. You can write an epic poem. Uh, you can set word count goals of any length. So you could set a goal of 10,000 words or 100,000 words. And it's just it's just a little more casual, but it's still, um, you know, got all the kind of NaNoWriMo principles of a goal and a deadline as a creative midwife and a community of people. Okay, hang on. Um, I've just realized that you've only sent your links to me. Uh-oh. Hang on, I'm on it. <laughs> it's, it Zoom's defaults really... <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Now I see it goes to all panelists. Okay. Oh, and I'm not. Oh, using all panelists. All panelists. They not. I oh, no, I've totally just. I've just shared a link that doesn't have anything to do with this. I'm not on my own computer, and so. Here, I'm gonna. I'm gonna reshare links. Okay. I apologize for my Zoom clumsiness. I apologize for my. I'm on a Mac, and I'm a Windows girl, so I don't even know the basics. Okay, there we go. There's a hundred words story to panelists and attendees. Okay, great. So how many people um, that participate win? Good question. Um, uh, sorry, I'm doing two things at once. I'll put in the other link later. Um, about 15%. So, uh, so some, a lot of times people react to that like, oh, only, only 15%. Or, or only, you know, 40,000 people out of those three 300,000 people who signed up finished. I'm like, only? <laughs> That's a lot of new novels in the world. Yeah. Um, and it speaks to, I think, how tough it is to write 50,000 words in a month. So, um, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's our running average year over year. And what are your, have any of the, um, any books that started off in NaNoWriMo become major bestsellers? Yeah, um, thousands have been published. 
Uh, many of them have been bestsellers. Um, I think of Aaron Morgenstern's uh, Night Circus, oh. Hugh Howey's Wool, uh, Marissa Meyer writes in NaNoWriMo every year, so she wrote Cinder and NaNoWriMo. Uh, Rain Rainbow Rowell wrote Fangirl. Um, you know, um, Nick Stone has written during NaNoWriMo, Elizabeth Acevedo, um, Natalie Perkins, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of great writers. Some of them have been, like I listed Matali and Elizabeth because they've both been nominated for the National Book Award. And it was Matali's uh, book that she started in NaNoWriMo that was, was nominated for that. So um, yeah, a lot of wonderful writers. Okay, yeah. so it can happen. This could be the jumping, this could be the jumping off point that you, that you guys need. Yeah. I had Lori Hall Anderson on our, our podcast. Um, a lot of writers don't tell us or they don't announce it to the world. And she, she's done NaNoWriMo several times. She said she just yeah, never but, posted about it. And I was saying that I just finished reading a book to my daughter called A Murder Most Unladylike. And as soon as I, I just finished it last night and in the acknowledgements, it says, I started this novel as part of National Novel Writing Month. And I was like, oh. Yeah. How many are out there that you don't even know about? Oh, there's tons. And, and uh, Rebecca Roanhorse, uh, she, her new novel is getting a lot of press. And uh, she wrote, uh, she's written during NaNoWriMo as well. So. Cool. Very cool. And so uh, all of those people were probably in the local groups. That's another good reason for connecting with all these people is, you know, you never know who's going to take off. Yeah, on that note, for romance writers, uh, Alexis Daria, she just had um, this book. It's gotten a lot of attention, a lot of acclaim. You had me at Ola. And she's a romance writer, and she, for years and years, was our New York City municipal liaison. So she led those write-ins. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I think she's written about a million words on the NaNoWriMo site. So anyway, we're very proud of her. Yeah, well, so that, that, that's the quantity. That's what you're talking about. If you write exactly. enough and you flex those muscles enough, then you get good. You, you learn do. all the skills. It's that, it's that whole rule of, um, I don't know if you've heard of this, but that you have to put in 10,000 hours to reach yeah. mastery. So it's, it's basically that, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. So Michael says, what do you do if you realize halfway through that you don't really like the direction it's going or you don't really like what you're writing? Uh, what you what you don't do is quit. <laughs> uh, a, a, a lot of people quit. And uh, you. I think the thing about a novel is you're going to have many moments like that. It's not just one. And uh, you have to keep writing to find your way through that. Um, and it usually does happen right at that point, which I call the muddy middle, in the middle of the month or the middle yeah. of the novel. You know, but it will happen numerous times. And I think, you know, uh, I always advise people to not put so much pressure on themselves, maybe to take a walk, do something fun, get away from the page a little bit, let yourself daydream, take notes. I think writing longhand is actually a great way to kind of um, spark your imagination in a different way. But don't give up. I mean, keep keep writing, even if, it, you know, I mean, again, like this is a zero draft. So just just stop and explore the story in a different way and you can clean it up structurally later. Um, but so many people, I've heard of so many stories of people who refine their story like a week later, um, or, or they will make a heroic comeback and they'll write 25,000 words that last week to get to 50 because, and they'll write that 25,000 because they discover the story and they're super enthusiastic about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and I, do, I often don't write chronologically. I'll often like jump into it because because I plan, I sort of know where it's going to go. So I'll write a scene here and I'll write a scene here. And if there's one that's I'm struggling with, I'll jump ahead or I totally know, advise that. Play with that a little bit. I do that all the time too, and I think that that's a great way if you're stuck in one part to just go and write the scene that's calling you. Write the scene that will give you yeah. creative juice. Yeah. And then I often write the very end first and then fill it in. Oh, good. Yeah, I quite like it. Cool. Um, Okay, so Kevin says, I've written flash fiction for years. Is it okay to approach NaNoWriMo as 30 flashes, which I could join the dots together into a novel later, almost like writing episodes? Yeah, I think um, there are a lot of, there's this new concept that I'm very intrigued by, or this emerging trend called the flash novel. And I, most of the novels I've been writing are exactly that. They're kind of these very short sections that almost they're, they're stitched together kind of like a collage mm -hmm. so i think that's a great writing a technique yeah okay there you go yes kevin yeah um so do you have to submit your words as you're going along or do you just submit your words at the end or how does that how does that work 
We uh, operate on the honor system. So you you update your word count goals every day through our you know word count tracker. If you're going to cheat on this, <laughs> I don't I don't know. Um, you need if you're going to cheat on this, you really need to kind of do some deep introspection and <laughs> uh, think about who you are and how you're navigating the world. Um, yeah. yeah. Because it's the prize at the end of this is what you have created. So if you cheat, you don't actually get it. Exactly. That is the main prize. You also get a winner certificate. You also get access to winner goodies from mm -hmm. sponsors like you. So there are there are some prizes, but you know, in the end it is like you say, the gift is your novel. So um yeah. Yeah, okay. Um Helen says so it's just the word count that you put up. It's actually a little bit more than the word count. There's a whole, you can put in the time you wrote, you can put in uh, how you felt while you were writing. So there's there's different things to track like that kind of extra fun things. So we're going to keep building that out to make it more yeah. fun. Well, and then if you do reach the muddy middle where everything just seems wrong and you want to throw it all away, you know, you can recognize that. And you can look back on that when, once you get figure out how to get past it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Sarah says, what does it mean to win? So that just means you reach your 50,000 goal, right? Yep, you hit 50,000, yep. Um, you know, it says, if you are a beginner, where can you go to get some ideas about coming up with a plot? Can you recommend any YouTubes or blogs or places to, to help get started? Yeah, well, I'm gonna be a little bit self-serving here to start. Um, the the right-minded website that, or podcast that I mentioned, we've been interviewing um, some of these NaNoWriMo authors like Alexis Dari and Hugh Howie and Jacqueline Woodson and asking them for their uh, best writing tips. So you could go there and listen to some of those episodes. Um, also on the NaNoWriMo site, if you go to Writer's Resources and click there, um, you will notice, um, oops, it's not there. It's under, uh, for some reason I'm not finding it. We do have a nano prep section. Um, oh, there it is, yeah, it is under Writer's Resources. I just missed it. But uh, uh, there's a link called nano prep and we have a bunch of resources there um, and this whole kind of curriculum that I mentioned. Um, also, we have, uh, you know, um, some of the books I mentioned, um, No Plot, No Problem, which is written by our founder. I wrote this one, Pep Talks for Writers. So those are both um, helpful guides. Um, and then there's just, yeah, there's, I mean, there's, there's a whole garden of Eden on the web, you know, of, of, of resources. Uh, so I would just go to your you know, trusted authors who've written writing books or your trusted sources. I bet Pro Writing Aid has has things that will help as well. Yeah, we've got um, lots of stuff. I'll, I'll go have a quick look through the archives and see what's in there that I think could be useful. Yeah. So yeah, we have, we have, we're living in this age where there's no shortage of writing help. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, let me see what else. Do we need to get through? Oh, Kevin says, thank you for supporting his flash writing notion. Oh, yeah. Flash flash is on the rise. A lot of people are writing flash these days, so I'm excited. Um, Helen wants to know more about prizes. She loves prizes. She's a runner and needs the motivation. Okay. Well, uh, good. I'm glad Helen asked this because there's a whole system of digital rewards on the website as well. So you will be rewarded for hitting certain milestones with badges on the website. I so there's a whole that. kind of system of online badges. It's amazing how motivating it is. Um, one of the things I, we have, like, for instance, there's a whole series of streak badges. Oh. And I, I'm a streak person. I, I, I love hitting those. I love the hitting the streaks almost more than I like hitting the word count um, milestones. So yeah, if you can write all 30 days in November, which is really hard to do, that's almost as hard as it is just to hit 50,000 words. So it, it seems like there's always something that comes up in my life that will prevent me from writing a day or two. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, somebody says try plot-generator.org. Um, they've only just sent that to panelists, but if anybody's looking for somewhere, I've actually looked at it and I think it's quite entertaining. It's a while ago. Plot-generator.org. Yeah. Um, okay, Barb says, do you do this just once a year? Um, we've sort of touched on that. There's also Camp NaNoWriMo, but the main NaNoWriMo activity is just once a year, right? Main event once a year, but like I said, we have um, that kind of uh, writing project goal deadline. Um, you can set it uh, throughout the year and, and enter writing challenges because we really do want people to write year round. Um, so yeah, we have that on our website. I always call NaNoWriMo, I don't know if people are familiar with Fitbit, but um, NaNoWriMo is kind of like Fitbit for novelists. 
except that we existed before Fitbit. So Fitbit's kind of like NaNoWriMo for walkers. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I like it. NaNoWriMo and Fitbit. Yeah, Fitbit is NaNoWriMo for walkers. I like it. They're very similar. Um, Tammy says she's just signed up. Um, did you say there's a Facebook or a social media group to be part of? Or generally, do we send people into the forums? Yeah, there, there are numerous ways to interact with the NaNoWriMo community. Uh, Facebook has a very vibrant, um, we're, we're on Facebook, but also there's a NaNoWriMo Facebook group that has a lot going on. Uh, Twitter, hashtag NaNoWriMo, always has a lot going on. Instagram is increasingly, I think, the most active um, platform. So we're, we're on all those. Um, uh, but yeah, so I think, um, and Pinterest is very active as well. So a lot of different places online where you can engage with the writing community. I mean, I guess that's good because everybody has their favorite social spaces. So as long as, exactly. as long as they can find NaNoWriMo somewhere, wherever they spend. Exactly. Their we're, we're not going to try to shut down the Facebook activity <laughs> and make everybody come to our site. You know, we want to be where they are. So. Yeah. yeah. Although the thread is really interesting. There's just a lot of, there's a lot of people in the NaNoWriMo forum itself that have done it before and that are, that give really good advice. Yeah. There's a lot of good stuff in there. There's so much good stuff and there's so much fun stuff too. Like one of my favorite forums is like, you know, you're a writer when, and everybody gives their answer to that. And it's like just fun, whimsical answers that really make you think about what it is to be a writer. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of good forums. But then actually Ardell says that she limits her cruising so that she focuses on the writing. So, I mean, that's the yeah. good thing about going into the forums is it's, you're still focused on your writing. Like compared to if you're on Facebook and somebody sends you a video of cats. <laughs> yeah, this um, this will be a challenging time to write um, because of distractions in the world. <laughs> yeah, well, or maybe this is a great time to do it if everybody's going to be stuck at home for a while. If they're you know with these new waves that may be coming along, maybe this is a way to sort of shut all of that out and try and make something constructive out of this. Yeah, I hope so. I hope people honor that side of themselves because I think it's really necessary. I know so many people who spend their days doom scrolling as the, the word so much is. And uh, yeah, you're not going to find your novel doom scrolling. <laughs> no, no, I think it's, I mean, I know, I recognize that it can be hard. And a lot of people say when, right. But it's hard to focus because there's so many things to think about. But actually, I, I mean, in some ways, I find it easier just to, if I can zone into my little world and forget about all the rest of that. So right. maybe, maybe I, it'll, it depends who you are. It depends you who you are. Yeah. Um, okay. So are there any tips that you can give for people who are doing this for the first time? What do people get right and what do people get wrong? Well, I think the time management... Thing that I mentioned earlier is huge. I think um, coming up with a strategy of preparation is huge. I think um, finding a community is huge. Um, let me think. Yeah, and then and then not quitting. I think we've touched on so many of them. Yeah, okay. um, you know, so many people uh, the, on the not quitting thing. It, it is kind of interesting. I mean, I do think they they sometimes quit because they haven't done those things I just mentioned. You know, they haven't thought about their novel. They haven't planned to have the time. But, or, or they just hit that wall and they just decide, oh, this isn't for me. And it, it is inevitable. I mean, when I say to, I, it's hard to get a 30-day writing streak, it's amazing how hard that is because um, I always get like a cold, yeah. <laughs> you know, the first week or yeah. something, something comes up, you know, and I think that's just the test of a writer. And um, again, I just advise people not to quit, um, to even recalibrate your goals. Like if you fall behind, if you get horribly sick and fall behind um, by a lot of words, just, just set a 30,000 word count goal or 40,000 word count goal, just keep writing. And, and as I said, um, a lot of people get this crazy second or third burst of, of writing energy and they will do amazing things uh, or they'll write after November. I mean, this is something you hopefully want to continue doing. So uh, I think those are the main things. Okay. Yeah, and believe in yourself. You know, I think that's the thing. Like NaNoWriMo, so many people don't write because they, they don't believe in themselves. They don't, they don't believe that they're writers. So you're a writer because you write. So call yourself a writer. Believe in your story. Um, a lot of people will say, like, I'm worried that my story is derivative, that it's too much like Harry Potter. Uh, it's not original. Uh, don't worry about that because you're going to make it original by writing it. You know, and, and there really is no truly original story in the world. All, all stories have been told in some way. 
-hmm. So just, just write it and don't worry about all those naysaying voices. So yeah, that banishing the inner editor part is really important. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Kevin is suggesting using a Pomodoro extension in Chrome just to shut everything down so that you can't. A Pomodoro extension lets you set a timer for it so that you can be really focused and it closes down all of your social, all of everything that could distract you and you're not allowed to to access any of it until you've done the job, which is a good, which is a good tip. That's and, a great uh, tip. Oh, go ahead. I was just, so Natalie is saying she's a new writer and, and she's, she doesn't aspire to win NaNoWriMo yet, but she likes the community aspect of it. Does it make sense for her to try in November or should she wait until the April or July camp? Never wait, never wait. Good. Good, <laughs> try, try. Think of a NaNoWriMo, you're training, you know, you're training during NaNoWriMo and you're going to, get better when you do camp, you know, it's, it's all kind of a step ladder. And I love that Pomodoro technique. In fact, that's what a lot of our municipal liaisons do when they hold these writing gatherings. Uh, we call them word sprints and we have a, a word sprints account on Twitter that actually is running 24 hours a day uh, throughout November. And it's basically that it's like give, giving the, the people running it will give a word um, or a prompt and then they'll challenge you to write five or 10 minutes as fast as you can. And <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a little cough here. But what's interesting about that for me is I've held, I've led um, hundreds of these word sprints. I've never seen one person not write. And so this is like scientific evidence that writer's block doesn't exist. Yeah. Or if you're feeling that there are techniques to get over it. Well, and we've, we've started doing the write-ins as well. We started doing it when lockdown first started happening back in March. <coughs> And I've never really been a writing prompt kind of person, but I went along to support Haley, who was doing this. And I am amazed how much I write in all of them. I go to most yeah. of them just because she runs them all. And I I just go because I just find it really fun and really interesting. And I'm amazed at the things that 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 come to me and that come out. And, you know, none of it's, it's not Hemingway, but it's, you know, it's... It's, it's pretty amazing, it's though. On the, it's, and it's on the paper. It's pretty amazing what's in your head, words and stories. And if you have that pressure and that invitation to open the door for them to come out. It's just amazing what will come out. Yeah, and just little little questions, even things like, so what's the room like with that that they're in? And I, and I mm -hmm. realize I know that despite the fact that I've never actually asked myself that question or thought about it, but somehow yeah. percolating our, back there. Our brains are mysterious things. Oh, magical, mysterious things. <laughs> um, okay, so someone says, what about using dictation software um, that can generate a transcription? I yeah, I think use whatever writing tool works for you. I had a uh, horrible repetitive stress injury stuff for years and I used to use uh, Dragon Naturally Speaking and um, I had a hard time composing with it because this was back in the early days of it. But I know a lot of people who dictate their novels. So I know people who have written their novels on their phones. This is something I could never consider doing. Yeah, but I feel like um, that's people that are younger than us, Brent. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so what about people that have started their novel? Somebody says they're about 30% done their novel, but it's been sort of stuck there for a long time. Is this a way to reinvigorate the writing? Absolutely, yeah. yeah I think so too. Do Through it. Through everything we just said, yeah. Get that 30% out and go. Yeah, that, you're like, half, you're, I was going to say you're halfway there, but you clearly aren't. You've only got 70% to go. Do it. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh yeah, somebody else is asking about what's the editing NaNoWriMo again? The nan Nano Edito? So that's uh, <laughs> yeah, we perhaps should rename it, but it's called I Wrote a Novel, Now What? <laughs> I yeah. feel like Nano Edito doesn't flow in this. Yeah. Um, yeah so, so if they sign up for NaNoWriMo, is, there all, is that sort of information all in there about I Wrote yep. a Novel, What Next? If you sign up for NaNoWriMo this year, you'll be on our list and we will send you um, emails about everything we're doing. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. There's lots of people that are saying they're going to do it. It's great. Good. Um, okay. Any more questions? I've got a few more questions. Uh, Martin wants to know what is flash writing? Uh, flash fiction is typically defined as um, stories that are under a thousand words long. Um, but, you know, it's interesting because there are all these subgenres of flash fiction, even though it's already a tiny story like, like mine, hundred word stories, oh, yeah. six word stories, three minute fiction, hint fiction, um, postcard stories. Uh, there are endless names for them, which I love. Palm of your hand stories. Um, yeah, so it's, 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 I think it's um, a lot of people, for some reason, it's a trend that's really emerging. Uh, I love it. I think maybe it, it's in part because you can read them so easily on the internet. 
Um, so a lot of magazines specialize yeah. in publishing them. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Tana says it's only going to take them about 15 hours to write all 50,000 words. What should they do for the other 15 days? <laughs> 15 hours to write 50,000 words. Wow. So that's 3,000 words plus per hour. Yeah. Um, well, I would keep writing. Keep writing, um, for sure. Yeah. I know people who write that fast and they go for like 200,000 words. I know somebody who set a, a goal of not just one novel in the month, but two. Oh, um, I've yeah. known people who really set goals ahead. of 12 novels a year. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, keep writing. Don't, 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 don't take a break. Just keep writing. Maybe you can get a full trilogy done. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Marissa Meyer, who I mentioned earlier, um, her first NaNoWriMo, uh, when she wrote what would become Cinder, um, I think she wrote more than 100,000 words, well more than 100,000 words. So she started to, to write that whole series. Her first series started during NaNoWriMo. Cool. Yeah. Um, oh, somebody says, why November? The Thanksgiving holiday in the U.S. Mm. kind of trips them up. Mm. Yeah, it can work for people or against people. Um, if, if you're if you're a person like me who who tries to bow out of all of all hosting duties, then it works for you. Um, <laughs> but uh, I a turkey, but I'm very busy writing <laughs> this novel. Right, right. <laughs> um, I have a, a friend hosts it every year, fortunately for me. But um, uh, you know, there there is no real rhyme or reason to it. But if you can write a novel during November, then you can do it any month. And uh, that's what the writing life is about. You're always going to have something. There's always going to be something on the calendar that's going to be an obstacle. So, yeah, uh, nobody ever gets to a point that where they just say, "I just don't have enough to do." I just exactly I should write one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think it's nice and dark in November too. It's Good dark. writing weather. You can put on cozy sweaters. You can yeah. feel the pressure to go outside and see breathe fresh air. I think the motive to be one motive to be a writer is is to be able to have those cozy sweaters. Yeah, that might be why I did it <laughs> originally. Yeah, I think it's really important for all writers to have cozy. Yeah, sweaters. nice beverages. All right, so I've seen. I mean, if you look through the chat now, Grant, there's tons of people have entered their their um, login names so they can find each oh, cool. other on the platform. Um, yeah, and I will, I'll check in on um, our sponsor post there tomorrow and say hello to everybody and we can we can connect and figure cool. out how it all works together. I put in the I think I didn't put in the right minded link, so I'll do that. Okay. Um so yeah, our guest our featured guest on the homepage here is Rebecca Roanhorse, who wrote this amazing new novel, but we just uh, interviewed Hugh Howey and Alexis Daria and Jacqueline Woodson. So a lot, a lot of good people. Did that? Yeah, that went through. Yeah. Cool. And if everybody finds their people on the NaNoWriMo website, can you everybody tell them about Pro Writing Aid for when they're finished their novel and they want to shine it all up at the end? You guys can all be my champions in the in the forums. Yeah. And that's it. We're out of time. We're out of time. And you just put, you just presented that nice visual for me of people shining their car with pro writing aid. Shining um, their getting it all shiny. Yeah, we're just going to polish it. We're just going to take it with something really good and just make it even better. Yeah. Good. And trust and trust me, your NaNoWriMo novel will need some shining. We, we do specialize in that. So. Yeah, but I love the freedom of that. You know, you can just write it. If it's if it's junk, it's fine. You can go in and just redo it, fix it all up. It can be the mechanics of your I mean, yeah. metaphor too far. And pro writing, it is waiting like a, like a car wash at the end of NaNoWriMo. Yeah, too. That's good. <laughs> that's good. Uh, I can see everybody in the chat saying thank you, Grant. Oh, so, thank really you. Appreciate it. And we'll see everybody in NaNoWriMo. Yes. Oh, yeah. Everybody saying thank you. Thanks, guys. Good. Thanks for All everybody right. to come today. Tonight, where, your, today where you are. Oh. Put on your favorite headgear and, and write that novel. Nice. Go all in. <laughs> I mean, that that's if that's not inspiration for everybody, I don't know what is. All right. <laughs> thanks, everybody. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.